Hi, my name is Saul Baeza and I will be presenting the pictorial Exploring the Potential of Apple Face ID as a Drag, Queer and Trans Technology Design Tool on behalf of my colleagues Ron Guacari, Christina Anderson and Oscar Tomiko. This pictorial is the result of a long-term research project focused on finding opportunities to use Apple Face ID software and infrastructure to build new hybrid identities, exploring its potential as a drag, queer and trans technology design tool. Face tracking technologies, like all biometric artificial intelligence, only exist in relation to bodily surveillance. Military purposes, scientific research, individual and mass observation, epidemic monitoring, and public, private, social, and political pursuits have resulted in new and complex biometric control technologies and software. These systems are designed not only to see, but to confer advantage, to detect, to verify, to identify, to recognize, to define, to classify. But to recognize what? By recognizing someone and the pre-established social, cultural, institutional systems of sex and gender identity, these technologies and software are potentially discriminatory for transgender and non-binary individuals and communities, as well as black and other marginalized races and ethnicities. They also are limiting non-inclusive technologies for the expression of drag and queer stances, transfeminist positions, and other activist viewpoints. Nevertheless, Biometric artificial intelligence also provides an amazing opportunity as a powerful design tool for the expression of identity. Following drag and queer methods and methodologies by using our own bodies as tools for identity expression, definition, and personal proclamation, we seek to pervert surveillance and its embodied data as site of opportunity, disruption, and resistance. Additionally, employing Oliver Hameson's research for defining and designing trans technologies, we have explored the potential of Apple Face ID as a trans technology design tool. Our approach is based on the following. Before the appearance of biometric and artificial intelligence, we could only explore and express our physical identities and consequently confront its limited, non-inclusive and discriminatory classifications. Now, with the appearance of these technologies led by Apple Face ID, we can also explore, express and design our digital identities under our own parameters. Not only a singular identity, in fact, but multiple ones. By experimenting for months and conducting a series of design exploration, we develop ways to successfully train the system by creating new identities, poorly hiding the original ones through wearing prosthesis with the facial features of other people. By mixing different facial prosthesis, we were able to design an unphysical existing individual who can be trained as a new human by the face recognition software, connected to our personal data and any other activity related or associated to it. The present exploration, methodology, workshop results, and project outputs aim to be a first step for future open source scenarios exploring new opportunities for biometric facial recognition systems as identity expressions too. Mainly, two research studies and work relations and a workshop were conducted during the evolution of the project. The aim of the exploration was not only to study processes, iterations, and gather results, but to discuss physical and digital connotations, empowering individuals to understand the workings of biometric and artificial intelligence as the complex system behind face tracking technology, as well as the opportunities they afford. As a last step, by working with LGBTQ+, non-binary, and cisgender volunteer participants for a workshop, we have been able to explore together approaches and positions toward these technologies, as well as discuss together the potential of the system as a drag, queer, and trans technology tools for identity expression. The first design exploration was an attempt to understand how Apple Face ID works from an intuitive and practical first-person perspective. We were three participants, all designers combining non-binary, cisgender, and LGBTQ plus individuals. We took molds from our faces and made plaster prostheses out of them. We exchanged the prostheses between the three of us and started to test the software with them. We each worked with our own iPhone, using Apple Face ID as the main design and verification design tool. In order to extract information and compare results, the full process was documented by taking photos and videos for each accomplished or failed step. Using customized tables, we also analyze different aspects of the processes, such as aesthetics and feelings, shape and volume, functionality and detection accuracy. Once we had each filled the table with images and processes characteristics, we share and compare our results. By the end of the exploration, each of us has tried more than 30 different processes and we ended up with five facial features and formal processes that had a higher acceptance from the Apple Face ID software. The second design exploration attempted to see if the results from the first exploration could be replicated with a wider range of faces. To do so, we asked up for to 10 volunteers to come to the studio to create molds of their faces. 
The same three participants from the first exploration tried prosthesis and facial features for more than 10 individuals. Using the face molds from the volunteers, we created PLA face reproduction using a vacuum machine, an easier and faster production process to create prosthesis than plastic molding. And using insertors, the three participants cut different fragments from the PLA face reproductions. We started with the five facial features that produced the highest functionality detection results from the previous exploration, making some modifications to learn the currency limits of each. Once again, each of us worked with our own iPhone, using Apple Face ID as the main design and verification tool. Once again, the full process was documented by taking photos and videos for each accomplished or failed step. Following the methodology of the first exploration, we used a customized table content, where we also analyzed different aspects of the prosthesis. By the end, each of us had tried more than 50 prostheses and we ended up validating the same five facial features and formal prostheses that had higher acceptance results from Apple Face ID in the previous exploration. Conducting an open workshop with LGBTQ plus non-binary and cisgender individuals constituted the last step of the research process. It represented the opportunity to present our findings to a bigger audience than previous exploration, sharing our methodology with them to validate Apple Physity as a potential tool for an online identity expression. The aim of the workshop was to envision new opportunities for identity ambiguity, multiplicity, and fluidity, with a special focus on trans and non-binary people and their inputs and experiences, to explore Apple Face ID as a drag, queer, and trans technology design tool. We ask it up to 20 people to take part in the workshop. The workshop started with a group presentation where we introduced the research topic, methodology, workshop dynamics, and proposed timings. The workshop is divided into parts. The first, work as an introduction to the software and technology. We share our previous research outputs to present the possibilities and opportunities of Apple Face ID as a tool for identity expression. In connection to our previous exploration, the 20 workshop participants work with prosthesis from the same 10 faces employed during the first and second exploration. At the end of that first part of the workshop, we had more than 200 prostheses to analyze. The results pointed to the same five facial features and formal prostheses that seemed to have higher acceptance results from Apple Face ID software, coinciding with the results of the two previous explorations. As with the second exploration, we also concluded that there were at some angles and volumes between different users' prostheses from the same facial features that had non-identical verification accuracy. The second part of the workshop was planned to summarize participants inputs, ideas, approaches, and behavior in relation to what they have discovered and experienced according to their own motivations and objectives about the possibilities of designing digital identities. Thank you for listening. We encourage you to read the full pictorial and hear your feedback. Feel free to reach out to us and continue the conversation. Thanks.